Hello, and welcome to What's the Big Idea? I'm your host, Andrew Whitmire. Today's episode is brought to you by Destination Imagination, commonly referred to as DI, the leading creative problem-solving experience for children. Through DI's innovative, project-based educational experiences, participants gain the skills that will set them up for success in careers like the one we're going to hear about today. Learn more about DI at destinationimagination.org. This is part two of our interview with Ted Tagami from Magnitude.io. Part one is available now wherever you get your podcasts. You know, Ted, one of the things in, in Destination Imagination that we talk a lot about are the four C's, you know, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. We've, we've even said the, most of those words, even, you know, in this conversation in, in different ways. Um, I'm curious to hear from your perspective, how do you use the four C's in your work and other things that you do in your life? As, as we know, you're, you're a very creative guy and, and an art, artist at heart. No, oh, thank the artist at heart. Really, I'm a pretty bad artist if you look at my artwork. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that you can express yourself is the most important thing. And I think exactly. that's what I wanted to be able to do when we created Magnitude is just, you know, you go out and do it. Uh, and you want someone to feel something if you're going to be involved in an experience. And for me, learning meant I needed to remember something. Like I remember them going, to, I remember my dad tripping over me in the early morning hours because I was watching in this black and white, you know, TV and this big old console there in the living room, you know, wrapped in my blanket because they were going to the moon. I remember that moment. Right. And, uh, or you might remember like a big earthquake that you were, uh, you always remember those amazing moments or the birth of a child or loss of a loved one, sadly, but those moments are seared in our mind. And if we can create experiences that are memorable like that, and and it's not, you can't force that. It's it, it in a way it's like, it's like a tuned instrument. If it if if the instrument's tuned, it's going to sing elegantly, uh, and so you have to create an experience where uh, where everyone feels like they're in tune with it. And each person does it a little differently. Each person has their own way, and so we do different types of projects. Uh, we're really excited about our space station project because it does connect schools around the world, and you do have a chance for cultural exchange and what have you. But your four C's, I think, what would be helpful is to maybe go through each of the C's and then talk about them. So why don't you lead off with each of the C's and we can kind of go through them. So the the first C is is communication. Wow, that's super important. I think a lot of people think about communication as the verbal communication, uh, right? About talking or maybe even reading and writing. Uh, So if I'm going to send an email, that's kind of communication. But communication is also body language, right? And that's super important. And if you're, you know, Fortunately, I think we're all kind of coming back together here in the fall and maybe even some summer programs are coming back together. We'll be in person. How great is that? But I, you can tell when someone is engaged with your experience and they'll communicate, not actively communicate, just nature, you know, crossed arms or what have you, or turning the body away from uh, what's happening. They're giving you signals. And I think the biggest part of a communication is not me talking, but me listening. That's the other side of the equation. I think a lot of people miss like on this conversation, Andrew, I'm talking way too much. Um, but really the no, idea not, here, being, <laughs> being able to listen uh, and really listen and understand what someone is feeling, where someone's coming from and what's important. It, you know, we can talk about the curriculum and the coursework and what we want to try to achieve in this and then how we might communicate it. But I think it really comes down to, am I on the right broadcast frequency for this person or for this group? And if I'm not, I need to recalibrate. Right. Uh, or maybe mm-hmm. it just doesn't work. And that's that's why I think we get conflict. If some person has a view of the world, the person has another view and you get that friction. And if they're hopefully mature enough, they can kind of work through their differences and understand there's differences exist. But they find a way to work around it despite that difference. Um, and I think that's super important. But communication is everything. And uh it's that listening part more than the speaking part, I think, is we will all get better com- as communicators. Definitely. So we, I think we have time for one more. So the, the other three C's are collaboration, critical thinking and creativity. So if there's one that sort of speaks to you, why don't you choose one and um, share your thoughts? Oh, my goodness. Well, I think, you know, collaboration and creativity go hand in hand. Often we want to work by ourselves, which is super important for the breakthrough. 
but there's a, a an attributed African saying, you know, if you want to uh, go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. So I think that's really kind of important to think about that, but I will actually touch on the critical. So getting all four C's in there, critical thinking, I think quite often um, speed takes precedent when it shouldn't over thoughtfulness. So that first thought we have, it's very difficult to do, but when we can take a pause and say, is that really the right thing? Is that really the right approach? Or why is it happening that way? Um, that muscle, we really need to uh, activate the critical thinking. I see some uh, young adults, and it's kind of frustrates me a little bit. They're at top-notch universities that cannot really critically think. They know how to use the tools, and they know how to get direction. But if I say solve this problem and it's kind of an open ended problem, they'll basically be asking for a set of instructions. Um, and so that ability to really kind of look and abstract the problem, it's something we need to develop very early on. And I'm really excited about learning more from others that know how to do that well. And I think what you said at the top of our conversation here, um, you know, I, I love uh, connecting people and I, I'm looking for the experts because I'm expert at nothing and I'm just really excited about stuff. And if I can get people excited about the same thing I'm excited about, and if I can get out of the way, then I think amazing things happen. So it's just about learning how to do that. But critical thinking, super, super important, Andrew. I think, I think, you know, your, your points on, on critical thinking and, and really all the four C's, they, they really do go hand in hand. It's, it, it is sometimes difficult to kind of really extract them from each other because if you're, if you're engaging, um, and, and communicating well, you're often collaborating with other people or ideas or materials. You're, you're having to think critically and then also, you know, layering on creative thought on top of all of that. It, it, it they really do just, they go so hand in hand with each other. So I appreciate, um, your thoughts, uh, about, about them. Uh, I think they're, they're really astute observations. Whether you're a parent, educator, or supporter of learning, you know that you can have a profoundly positive impact on a child's life by awakening their innate curiosity. For more than 20 years, Destination Imagination has been helping kids from all walks of life find what makes them unique. Join us in giving the gift of creativity by making a donation to DI today. Help ensure that we continue building resilient kids and communities all over the world. Visit us at destinationimagination.org and click donate to make a donation today. Um, so we are kind of moving into our rapid fire questions. Um, so I have, I have a couple of just yes or no questions for you. Uh -oh. Um, <laughs> no, no, so, yes, no, no, no. Yes, exactly. 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 So the first, the first question is, will robots ultimately take your job? No. Love that answer. Is social media the best or the worst? Neither. <laughs> Neither. Also diplomatic. Uh, does pineapple belong on pizza? There's a debate. <laughs> <laughs> I, Honestly, I love the, the heavy sigh before <laughs> the answer on that you one. Know, like, it depends on the weather. You know, I fair. Guess. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, all right. So we're, we're getting close to the end here. Um, is there anything else you'd like uh, our audience to know kind of before we wrap up? Absolutely. Um, don't wait for somebody. If you're really passionate or excited about it, the one positive thing about social media is you can find people that are like you. And that's the power. Uh, there's a lot of noise out there. And the best thing to do is probably avoid the noise. And if you love that thing, anime, uh, collecting bugs, whatever it is, you can find birds of a feather, as they say, the, the people that like what you like. And what you'll find, is you'll find those experts in the field. And if they really know their stuff, they want to help. Because they're excited about that thing and they want to show you, but you have to be a really good student. You have to be attentive, responsive, and you got to do your homework, but you can grow really, really fast. There's formal education and there's informal education. Um, you know, one thing I'm, I'm trying to keep to heart is people often ask, where did you get your education? But I don't think anyone really asks, where did you get your learning? Because we never stop learning, right? And education, unfortunately, is 
been put in this mindset in civilization and society today where it's something that you do when you when you completed it, you're done. Mm -hmm. And a lifelong learner is a little different than a lifelong education, someone that's been in education. Right. So are we learning? I think is what's important. Um, and so go out. And if you're really passionate about something, it doesn't matter if you're six or 66. Go for it and reach out. And um, it, will it kill you? Probably not. <laughs> but think twice if you think it might. But more than likely, it's just a little bit about apprehension about something new. Right. Uh, and but give it a go. And uh, you'll find folks that will help and support you. Definitely. Uh, I, I, I think that that's an excellent point. Education is, is, I think, often used, um, you know, inappropriately for learning, you know, learning and, and being a teacher, if you will. I think teacher sometimes puts an onus on, on, on the person who's charged with helping students gain learning. Uh, it puts, it puts an in, uh, unfair onus on that person because really I think it's about being a guide and, and sort of unlocking possibilities for, for learners to then sort of, uh, take their learning in the direction, like you said, that they're most passionate about. So I, I think that that's, Dude, an, I that's love an that. excellent point. Possibilities. I love that you said yeah. that. So one last question, uh, this podcast is called what's the big idea. So, um, I know that many big ideas are exciting for you personally, but is there one right now, um, that's really exciting you that you'd like to share with our listeners? Oh, so the big idea is when we think about earthlings, they're not just humans. That's the big idea. It's all the other living things that are on this planet. Many of them we don't even know and we're losing. Mm -hmm. um, so let's be cognizant that although we think of how high we are on the, the alpha predators on, on planet Earth, there are some amazing species out there. They're just trying to do their thing. And I think every living organism, its number one task is to reproduce. You know, it's like that, you know, that's, right. that's, that's what's built in the cell systems or whatever if you're, for the multicellular creatures. But, um, you know, let's be responsible and think that we're sharing this wonderful space with so many other amazing creatures and things and organisms and stuff we don't even know. And if we can be empathetic to the world around us, we'll have a much better world. And of course, being empathetic to each other. But I think it starts with just acknowledging that uh, it's more than just humans on this planet. Um, and I think the faster we can recognize that as the 8 billion people on our earth right now, the better our planet will be um, in the 22nd century, maybe. How's that, Andrew? Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you so much, Ted, for being here with us today and, and sharing, sharing your ideas and sharing uh, your journey uh, to how you got to now with, with space and with magnitude.io. Uh, we really appreciated having you here. We would like to acknowledge that this episode of What's the Big Idea was recorded on land originally inhabited and cultivated by the Lenape and Ohlone and Shawnee Nations. We are grateful for this land and for the people who have stewarded it for generations. This episode was produced by Kelsey Selleck with additional material provided by Renee Rainville and Johnny Wells and music by Kevin McLeod. Special thanks to our guest, Ted Tagami, for joining us today. You can learn more about Ted by following him on social media at Tagami. To learn more about our show and about DI, visit us at destinationimagination.org. Destination Imagination is a US-based charitable 501c3 nonprofit with a global reach, and we rely on donations from listeners like you to support our mission and inspire and equip youth to imagine and innovate through the creative process. If you'd like to inspire even more big ideas for young people around the world, please consider making a charitable contribution to Destination Imagination at destinationimagination.org slash donate. I'm Andrew Whitmire. Thanks for listening to What's the Big Idea? The U.S. Department of Labor estimates that 65% of today's students will be employed in jobs that have yet to be invented. We have no way of knowing what those jobs will entail, but we do know that the skills that will prepare them for success are the skills that they develop through destination imagination. Hi, I'm Johnny Wells, Director of Education for Destination Imagination. Before joining the staff, I was a team manager for over 40 teams. Being a team manager is still one of the most rewarding experiences for me as I watched hundreds of students thrive and grow. 
Destination Imagination, or DI, is an international project-based competition that reinforces the four C's, creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. You probably heard about those skills in today's episode, and DI is the place where kids like yours develop those skills for themselves. Students work together in small teams to create solutions to an open-ended challenge. DI's team challenges fall into one of seven categories, scientific, technical, engineering, fine arts, improvisation, service learning, or, for the younger children, early learning. A DI team selects one of these seven challenges and prepares a solution to present at a local tournament. Throughout the experience, students create projects, solve problems, build relationships, learn new concepts, and have a great time in the process. We're building the workforce of the future. Today's DI participants are tomorrow's innovators, problem solvers, and leaders. If that sounds like a good fit for you and the young people in your life, we'd love to have you join us. To get started today, visit destinationimagination.org slash learn more.